guys, welcome back to me and Corner. How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are having a lovely day. I know I am. It is such a beautiful day outside, you guys. It's a nice day to go to the beach and just be by some water and get a couple of drinks and just have fun. It's just a nice day to be out doing anything. So before we get into this video, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be revamping my channel. Like I know I said it like a million times last year and only gave you guys three videos. But this time I'm really serious like to the point where I got a camera, I have a new tripod, and I bought two new lights to try to make the quality of my videos a little bit better. But anyway... Today I'm coming to you guys with a story time about my first time riding Greyhound. It was like the worst experience ever. For those of you who don't know, I did move to Pennsylvania. Things were working out great for me there in Pennsylvania actually. I was getting jobs, I had a new spot. Like I had like seven, six or seven jobs within the five month span that I was there. It was really nice. Anyway, I booked the tickets for my kids and I to come back to Florida. And I didn't have any money after that. The only money that I had was like $7 and some change for me to take a Uber or a Lyft to the Greyhound station. I had these two heavy duffel bags, like one bag had wheels on it, but it didn't have like the pop-up handle where I could just drag it with no problem. It actually had like the rope or cloth type of handle, which will eat your hands up if you're not taking it on a plane. Me and my kids, we get a lift. We go to the Greyhound station and the lift guy, he takes off. He thought we were good. We get into the building and I'm thinking, okay, I'm early. That's why there are no buses or no one standing outside. There was no one there. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? There's a note on the door saying that, oh, we relocated to on Markley Street. I'm like freaking out in my mind, trying to stay calm for my kids. But at the same time, like these bags are heavy as shit because I packed my whole house in those two bags. The place that they were talking about where they relocated to was actually a convenience store. And that convenience store was like less than a mile away from where the Greyhound station was, but it was too far for me and the kids to walk, especially with these heavy bags. And I wasn't going to ask my son or my daughter to help me carry these bags. If they're too heavy for me, why would I ask my kids to help me carry those bags? Like, I haven't had any phone service. I was disconnected and everything. I couldn't call nobody. I couldn't call my mom. I couldn't call nobody. The only reason why I was able to use Lyft is because I was using somebody else's Wi-Fi when I was at my place. So, me and my kids, we walked to this church, and I got a notification on my phone saying that there was a Wi-Fi signal in the area. I got on, I'm texting my mom, like, letting her know, like, I can't do this. Every time I try to move forward or try to do something good or something positive happens to me, Something bad happens or it gets taken away. I'm, I'm just over it because life is just really hitting me hard right now. I hit up my homegirl that I used to work with, asked her, can she take me and my kids to the location? So she pulls up, she takes us to the location. We arrive at this convenience store and I'm like, there is no way that Greyhound is picking me up from this convenience store. So I go into the um, convenience store and ask this Indian guy and I ask him, is Greyhound picking up their passengers here. Yeah, Greyhound is picking up passengers here, but you cannot park in front of my store. You can't stand in front of my store. You just have to sit off to the side until the bus gets here. And you cannot wait inside my store. And we also do not have a bathroom. Damn! So I'm like, yeah, like, okay, that's fine. And what really pissed me off was like his attitude and how he was acting towards me as if me standing outside of his store or parked outside of his store was going to stop people from coming in. And I was also pissed off at the fact that I done spent all my Lyft money just for this stop to be right around the corner from my house. And I probably would have had to pay like, what, three, five dollars. We're just sitting outside waiting, waiting, waiting. A Greyhound bus did come, but it was not my Greyhound bus. So I'm like, Asking a guy, do you know how long it'll take or do you know anything about my bus? He said, oh yeah, your bus should be here within 15 minutes. 15 minutes pass. My bus is not there. So 30 minutes pass. Bus still not there. So I'm on the Greyhound website using my friend's hotspot trying to figure out like what's going on. Then I use her phone to get on the phone with Greyhound and ask them like, why 
has my bus not come yet? Did I miss it? And he's like, oh, no, you did not miss it. It's just an hour delay. Two hours later. So the bus did finally come after an hour and 45 minutes. And I showed the guy the ticket because my friend, she was kind enough to walk me straight to the bus stop so I can be able to show the guy my ticket. My bags were super heavy and on the website it was saying that if your bag is over like 50 something pounds, then you have to pay an additional $15 for them to put your, your bags under the bus. So the guy was like, no, I'm not just, I'm not going to wait here. They wait at the station. Get to the station. I'm like panicking because I don't know how this works. It's my first time. So I walk up to customer service and tell the lady like, look, I, I have my tickets, but I just don't have my tickets to show you right now because they're the e-tickets. Lady was kind enough to print out my tickets for me. And I was like, well, I know my bags are heavy as I don't know what. The guy, he came up and he kicked the scale and he was like, ain't nobody getting bags away. Each passenger gets one free bag regardless of the weight that was cool philly was really nice everything was nice until i got to virginia because virginia was really pissing me off with no one not knowing what's going on or could not answer my questions as if it's their first day on the job we get to virginia i walk up to these three ladies and i ask them do you know what number my bus is because the number compared to the bus that I've been riding before, the number has changed. And the lady was like, I don't know. I walk up to the customer service lady. She was like, baby, did you get your reboarding pass? And I'm like, no. The bus driver looked at me. He was like, you're on my bus. I'm trying to get my reboarding passes now. He said, that's why you didn't get them, but I will remember your face so you can go ahead and get on the bus. One of the guys that was taking the Greyhound, he was trying to get assistance just like I was. And nobody was being helpful. So he seen one of the staff members and called him by his name or whatever like three times. The guy didn't answer. So he goes up to him thinking that he didn't hear him and taps him on the shoulder. And the guy turned around and looked at him and was like, nigga, don't touch me. When he said that, everybody was like, <laughs> The guy, he didn't know what to say. He was like so shocked to the point where he just turned around and walked the other way. And I feel like he did that to get a reaction out of everybody. And when he said that, that just pissed me off completely. Like, is this really how you guys handle passengers? I got mad, I started to get frustrated. I'm already sleepy. It's like three, four o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep right because us is, Seats are not comfortable at all. Like, they're only comfortable if you like going somewhere within a day. That was so unprofessional. Like, nobody at the Richmond, Virginia's Greyhound station was professional at all. My bus comes, I get on the bus, everything's good from there. I get to Atlanta, and things went to shits to the point where I almost got kicked off the bus. I got into it with a few of the staff members. Everybody around me, I just felt so bad for because the customer service was very poor. It was packed in that Greyhound station to the point where people couldn't even get inside the building. When I finally got into the building, my kids had used the bathroom. I set my bags down and we had to like squeeze our way through. And I left my bags by the entrance. So after we and my kids got out of the bathroom, somebody gets on the intercom and they say, Whoever choose black duffel bags or by the entrance, you need to come get them now before we throw them away. So me and my kids, we dragging my bags and squeezing through all of these people because there's so many delays. We find a spot sitting in front of people who are already sitting down on the benches. We sit down on our bags. A so-called security guard, he comes up to me and was like, get up. I looked at him like... And I turned around. He was like, get up. And I was like, you talking to me? He was like, yeah, I'm talking to you. I said, is that how you speak to somebody? Especially when you're at work? Because I'm not your friend. I'm not your homegirl. I'm not your girlfriend. I'm not your sister. You treat me with respect. He was like, if you don't get up, we'll cancel your trip. And I said, no, you're not. If you would have asked me in a different way, I would have got up. You didn't. You being just mad disrespectful. He was like, get up now before we cancel your trip so i get up and i told my kids just stay there i'll stand up my but my kids aren't standing up and there's nowhere to sit like i'm tired i just want to sit down and just like chill for a second so he walks off 
I walked back up to the front to try to get in line for customer service to see what's going on. And the customer service chick was ratchet as hell. Her and the guy, an older guy, are arguing because she lied to him about his bus being late and come to find out he missed his bus. I understand why the guy was upset. She's like, I will shut customer service down. You just don't know. You don't know me. I don't know. I will shut customer service down and won't nobody get no fucking assistance from me. And she walks out the door. Everybody just looking around like, what the fuck? Like, what is wrong with this girl? She comes back and she gets in the man's face and she's like, oh my gosh, you just made me go outside, get my hair wet because you missed your fucking bus. And the guy was like, if you would have told me the correct information from the beginning, I wouldn't have missed my bus. I'm like, what the f Like, what did I just walk into? And as soon as that happened, I'm like, never a fucking again will I take Greyhound. My first experience should not have been like this. Greyhound needs to really investigate Virginia and Atlanta. But Atlanta, it doesn't stop there, you guys. It don't. I'm sitting down with my kids or whatever. A group of buses did come and a whole bunch of people just cleared the way. So we had a lot of Latino people that was at the Greyhound station who didn't speak English. So they went up to the security acts. They were trying to ask him which line do they get in for their bus. So the security guy, the same one that told me to get up, he's like, oh my gosh, y'all can't fucking read. I know I'm the only one that went to high school and graduated and that knows how to read. Like, don't come over here if you don't know how to fucking read. Stay in your own country. Are you kidding me right now? You really gonna sit here and talk to these people like that? And the Mexicans, like, they just walked off. And I'm like, Greyhounds assist Canada and Mexico, not just the fucking United States. So, bro, like, you really need to chill out. Dude is also talking to older people like that. And I'm like, I, like I'm just sitting here just, like, smiling so hard because I'm pissed. I do not like when people... I mistreated. I don't care what country you come from, if you understand our language or not. And I feel like he said that and he was being very disrespectful and acted out that way because he knew that guy wasn't going to understand him. But the guy did understand that he was very frustrated. So my bus finally came and my tag had been on my bag since Philly. So what happened to my tag from the time that I got up to get on the bus? I don't know what happened, but my tag was just gone. And the bus driver was like, just go ahead and get on the bus. As long as you know what your bag looks like, you're okay. So I get on the bus, sit down, get my kids situated. And next thing I know, I'm being called off the bus because my tag is not on my bag. I get off the bus and they're yelling at me saying, oh, you did not get your bag checked when you were in Philly. You know, you will have to pay for your tag. You will have to do this, that, and the third. And they're just going off on me. And I'm like, no, I'm not paying for anything. My tag should be free. My tag had to have been uh, fell off from when I was inside the building up until now. I told her, I said, I'm not paying for anything. You can take me inside, get me a tag, and we can get back out. That's exactly what one of the ladies did. So as I'm walking out, this lady, she's yelling at me. Telling me, you need to get on the bus, hurry up, don't walk, you better run. Just being really rude, just doing too much for me. So I'm steady walking. As I get up to her, she said, get on the bus, like just really yelling at me. So I get on the bus and then she tells me, uh-uh, I don't know who you think you is or what you think you got going on, but we could cancel your trip if you continue to be disrespectful and i'm like how the fuck am i being disrespectful you told me to get on the bus i got on the bus you've been disrespectful from to me since i walked out the building yelling at me and i told her i said look i don't have a problem but i said it's obviously that you're the one with the problem so let's just chill i said y'all pulled me off the bus because my bag didn't have a tag on it tried to force me to pay for my tag Y'all are just being rude. I said, this station is like the most ratchetest station that I've been to. And I said, I will never travel with Greyhound again. I said, just put my bag under the bus so me and these people can get on and go. I have two kids on this bus. 
She said, if you continue to be rude to me, I will cancel your trip and continue on. And she said, your kids can continue on their trip. And I said, no, the fuck you're not. You're not going to send my kids on no bus by themselves. If you cancel mine, you're going to have to cancel theirs. Or if you don't, me and you will be fighting, period. The bus driver jumps in between us and he was like, yo, I told her it was okay. It was my fault. If anything, you should be yelling at me. But if I tell you it's okay, it's okay for her to put her bags under there. As long as she can remember what her bag looked like. He said, just let her go. And you're making these people late to get to the next station because you want to be an asshole. Thank you. She really done tried my life by telling me that she was going to send my kids on about their trip without me. I'm telling you, I would have beat her fat ass if she wouldn't have let me on that bus. Everything from there was fine. Like, the only thing that I had an issue with was I was tired. Like, I was really tired. The seats were uncomfortable. I wish I would have had flown. Oh, I forgot. I almost forgot. This one little boy. His grandmother, his mom, and the rest of his siblings. She had paid for a buku amount of seats. The bus was packed. They wanted to sit together, but they couldn't because, for one, me and my kids were sitting together. Like, my daughter had to sit in my lap from since Philly on up until Florida because I wasn't going to separate myself from my kids. I needed to see my kids. In the far back of the Greyhound, there is three seats. The lady, she wanted those seats. But this black guy, he was asleep. Instead of her waking him up or like tapping him to see if she can have those seats and they switch or whatever. Well, she goes back to her seat or whatever and goes in the entire bus ride from Atlanta to Alabama. Like she was going in and her family, they were all separated. Like the one little boy that I had an issue with was sitting right in front of me next to this Mexican lady. She didn't speak English. They talking to her family, FaceTiming and stuff like that. And the little boy was like, stop speaking Spanish, yo. Stop speaking Spanish, yo. Speak English when you ain't here. I turned around and looked at his grandma like, I know you hear your grandson up here cutting up and I'm looking at the mom. Like, I know you hear your son back here. He is so quiet on the bus. You have no choice but to hear him. So this African guy, he's telling the little boy, like, to chill out. And the little boy started messing with the guy next to him, the African guy's daughter. He thought that was my child. And he was like, can you tell him to stop? And the, I wanted to tell him to stop, but I did it because the boy's grandma, she was really tripping. And I didn't want to have to cuss his grandma out. And the little boy just going off, going off. He flipping the Mexican lady's hair. Messing with the little black girl's hair, messing with the young man right across from him. The African man is getting really pissed. So I heard, I told the African dude, like his grandmother right here, and he's looking at her, listening to her go off about the dude in the back, talking about he just propped up sleep as if he at home, this, that, and the third, la da 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 da. Yo, it ain't even that serious. You need to be paying attention to your grandson up here being disrespectful to this Mexican lady. He's taking her phone out her hand, like throwing chips and everything at her, falling on the floor in the aisles. You so caught up in this guy laying in the back to where you're ignoring your grandson showing his ass. I would have beat this little boy butt, like for real. But when we got to Greyhound, everybody was so happy because that was our last trip with them. Little boy was cutting up. I made it to Florida safe and sound, like one o'clock in the morning. I was so over it because I was tired, frustrated. Do you guys think I was just tired and that I was wrong for getting upset with the way I was being handled? Well, comment down below and let me know what you guys think because I honestly think I had every right to be pissed off. Especially with that lady threatening to cancel my trip and let my baby's trip continue on without me. What would you guys have done? Comment down below and let me know. Have you guys ever taken Greyhound? What was your experience like? Would you ever take Greyhound again? I know I won't. I'll be flying next time where somebody's going to carry my bags for me because they did not do luggage assistance. They had luggage assistance, but they did not offer it. Like whenever you were asked, it would be a straight no or they'll look at you like you're crazy.
Like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, go check out some of my old videos, you guys. I promise you guys more videos will be coming your way. And I'm going to get out of this hot ass sunroom. I should have brought the fan in there. But anyway, you guys, see you guys in the next one.